Welcome to our Halloween edition Photoshop tutorial creating a haunted house. Um, so the requirements for this project is to uh, create a spooky looking house with a cast of characters, um, at least five, whether that be um, ghosts, ghouls, goblins, witches, mummies, clowns, um, anything that is kind of creepy and scares you. You can either go for the campy Halloween look where they're all very cartoon looking or the really spooky, creepy Halloween look like some of these um, various examples from students um, in the past. So um, think about what types of characters you can put in your haunted house and we'll go ahead and get started. You also want to incorporate at least three different special effects. This could be an outer glow, rendering of clouds, um, adjustment layers, uh, adding some kind of uh, special effects from the bottom of your layers panel, masking, um, doing sp fancy things with selections, blending modes, lowering the opacity of ghosts and that kind of thing. Maybe putting something in the window of, um, you know, one of the windows in your houses. So we're going to go ahead and get started. So to create a haunted house, you're going to want to start with some kind of a background. Um, I would say start with like a daytime background so then you can experiment and practice using those adjustment layers as one of your special effects. So I like starting with a hill so then I have a lot of space to work with, with some things that are bigger in the foreground and some things that get smaller as they move away from you in the background. So I'm just going to go ahead and place a photo into this image. So this is hill two and this is one of the images provided to you on the tutorial in Google Classroom if you'd like to use that. I didn't provide every image that I'm going to go over in here because I really want yours to be unique and I want you to find your own images online. So for example if I was going to find images of say like bats or maybe um, of the moon or something like that I would go to the um, Google image search and I would search for it right here so maybe I want bats flying or something like that so then I can find a pretty simple image of either a whole bunch of bats or maybe just a few this one looks pretty good so I might just right click and choose save image as, call it something I'll recognize, and then click save on the desktop so it's easiest to find. And then you can always delete those later when you're done. So now clicking back on Photoshop, I'm just going to choose file place embedded. So this will allow me to place one file into another. You may have used this option before. So I'm going to try and find that house that I like. It's like a Victorian style house and I provided several different houses for you to choose from so that yours again can look unique. Um, so you can place it wherever you want it. I'm just going to place it here first and then hit in, enter or return whenever you're ready to rasterize that image, you know, make it a permanent part of that document. And then notice it will move separate from the background layer because it's over here. If you want to change anything on that um, layer, you may want to rasterize it. Right now it's something called a, a smart object. So if you right click on that layer and you go down to rasterize layer, then that little indicator in the corner will go away. And that shows that now I can alter these pixels. Okay, I think the easiest tool to use to select something like this, since it's pretty complicated, but it has a lot of straight lines, is using the polygonal lasso tool. So it's the lasso underneath the lasso tool. Um, it looks like it's made of straight lines. So I'm just gonna start clicking so you click once to place a point and then you click to go around. I'm not going to be super precise just for the sake of this tutorial here. So I'm going to go all the way around and I might speed up my video <laughs> so you can see the final results. And I might even go back um, and hit enter whenever you're finished. I might go back in the history panel to the point where I deleted my other house. There it is. Okay, so this is after it's finished. Um, say it's like bigger, Command T. So it starts out this big, right? And you wanna make it smaller. You can either hit Command T or go up to Edit, Transform or Free Transform, and then hold Shift, and then make it smaller. And you don't want it so small that you can't see details or you can't add details. Maybe I'll put it like it's halfway up the hill or something. Hit enter whenever you like it. And then notice that this is just a mask that I added. So just to show you what that does on like this other layer here, if I hit the mask button on this layer, I have this circle selected. 
is going to get rid of everything outside that sele selection. So that's a really non-destructive way to isolate certain areas or only show certain areas of a layer um, because that's still, all those pixels still exist on that layer. You can see them right here. They're just hidden beneath this mask. So black hides, white reveals. And then I can just like drag that down to the trash when I want to get rid of that layer. I'm just going to hit, or not the layer itself, but the, the mask. And then you can see I have the background copy and I have my Victorian house. Make sure you always make a copy of the background layer because you never know when you might need it. It's a, a good insurance policy. Okay, now that we have our house, uh, we're going to want to set the mood a little bit. So I'm going to go up to the top layer and now I might add an adjustment layer. So I want everything below this to be kind of dark, kind of gloomy, maybe have some different textures to it. So I need to move my little window here. There we go. So I can find it. So under the adjustment layers, you might add, <clears throat> oh, like a brightness contrast layer, darken it a little bit. So it looks like it's nighttime. Increasing the contrast will make it look a little bit more morose and maybe have some grunge to it. Um, we could add like a photo filter, either like a warming filter, or you could add, um, oh, it's the underwater. That just makes it bluish. Could be greenish, maybe a greenish haunted house. We kind of have a spooky feel. Yeah, I want to go, go with green. Increase the density a little bit. Now I might even select the sky and choose a different sky. So I'm going to select the sky from the background copy. Always remember to keep in mind what layer you're on. Nine times out of ten, if something's not working, it has to do with the layer. Um, this is the quick selection tool, so this will allow me to really quickly paint my selection. And then I could either use a mask to get rid of this non-destructively, or if I hit the delete key, watch what happens, it gets rid of that background. Pretty easy. Now I'm pretty sure I don't want that sky back, so I'm just going to delete it and be done. Command D, and then I could put another sky behind there. Or I could add just a blank layer, and then let's fill it with some kind of color. Let's just put like a white background for now. So command A to select all and then option delete to fill with the foreground color. This is the foreground color right here. And again, you don't have to follow these exact steps. This is meant to be a creative exercise for you. These are just some tips to help get you started. Um, so then option delete to fill that space and it kind of has that filter so it looks green when it's really white. Um, another way to do that, command uh, Z to go back in time, is you could command A to select all and then go up to edit fill and then choose the foreground color as your contents. Same results, Command D. So in Photoshop, there's like two or three ways to do everything. So it's just a matter of finding which way works best for you. Okay, so it doesn't quite have that spooky feel to it yet. So I might add, I'm gonna go up to the top layer here, add, um, let's see, a blank layer. And then I'm going to fill it with clouds but first I have to have a color so I'm gonna do white again so command A and then option delete it's gonna look wrong because it's gonna cover everything Command D but then I'm going to add some clouds so on this layer 2 I'm gonna rename that maybe I'll call it fog so I'm gonna add some like cloudy fog so I'm gonna go up to the filter menu and down under where it says render, you have the choice of clouds or difference clouds. I'm just going to add clouds. Before I do that, though, I'm looking over here in my tools. I want my background color to be like a darker, dark color because it's going to use these two colors here. Okay, so now filter, render clouds. There we go. So we have the dark green and the white and they're sort of evenly dispersed in like this random cloud pattern. You can also make it bigger if you want more like dramatic looking clouds. So command, whoops, command Z. <laughs> uh, command T for transform or again, edit, free transform. Um, and then you can zoom out a little bit out of your window in order to make it bigger to zoom in on certain aspects that you like. So I kind of like some of this texture in here. Yeah, that looks pretty spooky. Enter. Okay, now what's wrong with this picture? We can't see our picture, right? <laughs> so to see the house, you're going to have to lower the opacity of these clouds or add what's called a blending mode. So if you go over here to where it says normal, you can change it to a variety of other like blending options that allow 
the layers below to show through this layer. So it's kind of like making it see-through but with special effects. So this first category will darken wherever your pixels overlap. So you can see the, the darker areas there. This is the darken category. Uh, this next category down lightens. So that might be more of what I'm looking for. I kind of want it to be fog-like, which makes things lighter um, as it you know you see through this atmospheric perspective. And then the next category down increases the contrast. So overlay is a really good one there. Maybe soft light, yeah, that kind of looks like smoke, clouds, fogginess. And then this um, second to last category at the bottom creates difference. So this creates um, like the opposite colors. So I don't find that I use that very often. It's more for special effects. But you could add it to a ghost or something that's meant to look sort of otherworldly. Okay, so I'm going to think which one was my best. I really like the hard light here. I'm seeing some of the clouds overlapping some of my spaces. Now I can make a copy of this layer and make it even more extreme. So watch what happens when I drag, the, drag this layer down. Watch what happens when I drag this layer down to the copy layer button. Um, it got a little bit more intense. Did you see that? And now I can move it separate from the other one. Maybe I can rotate it. So that it has more of a unique feel to it. Command T and then hover right outside to rotate. There we go. We gotta have it cover the whole thing. There we go. We have some more random cloud patterns here. There we go. Something like that. Okay, and then I'm gonna try and put like maybe a night sky behind here. Let's see what happens. I think it'll go behind the background copy. So I need to Google that because I did not have that ready. So let's see. Let's Google night sky. Let's see what we get. Um, yeah, maybe night sky with spooky tree. Google whatever you want. Ooh, I kind of like this. I don't really like the moon though because I wanted to add my own moon. Here we go, spooky tree. Tiny little moon, we can fix that. All right, save image as, or in this case, you could just choose copy. So I'm gonna try that. So I'm gonna copy it to make it easier. Whoops, if I could click on it. Let's go back to this one. And this is just the preview of it, but we don't need it to be super huge for this tutorial. Now usually in projects you can't Google pictures from other photographers, obviously, and turn that in as your own work. Um, as a graphic designer, though, uh, the rule is if you change about 70% of each photo, then you can call it your own if you create a composite out of that. So say you have like one single candlestick that you've like copied from a picture online, but the rest of the composition is all your own. Of course, you can call that your photograph or your, your design. But in photography, I'm grading you on your picture taking skills, not so much your compositing skills in Photoshop. That's more of like a graphic design um, skill set. So make sure you're keeping that in mind with your actual projects. But for tutorials, absolutely, you can Photoshop pictures from wherever. Okay, so did I cop that, copy that? Copy image. And then I'm just going to hit paste, Command V, as in Victor, for paste. And you can see that it's back here. Ooh, and that makes it really dark. So now I just need to Command T to make it bigger, make it fit my space. That's starting to look more like nighttime. And then if I find that I don't like where all these clouds are dispersed to, I can go back to like my cloud copies. Maybe I'll combine these. So hold shift, select both, go down to the bottom when you right click and choose merge layers. So now those are both on one. I gotta add my blending mode again. So I can remember which one it was. Hard light, I think. There it goes. Okay, if I don't like how all of that is looking, I can also add a mask. So down here at the bottom of the layers panel, this white rectangle with the black circle in the middle, that is the layer mask like we looked at before, which is a non-destructive way to exclude um, certain parts of each layer. So if I click on this mask, it's a white mask, everything's revealed. So if I wanna hide certain parts of this layer, which is the fog, um, I can use a paintbrush tool. So we learned about using the, the brush tool um, to do like a painting, but you can also use it to create like an abstract background or to adjust these um, layer masks. So if I click on my brush tool and I have black selected as my foreground color, you can just kind of see what it does. Um, let's make sure it's on the right layer. 
or layer. Well, let's make sure it's on the right blending mode. So put it back on normal. And then you can see it's sort of like getting rid of that part of the layer. You can see right over here that I've made a, a mark. Now, obviously, command Z. I might want more of a simple brush. This one's like a pen. That's weird as a paintbrush. That's like a watercolor brush type thing. Um, we could turn down the opacity so each time we paint it doesn't make as big of a difference. Maybe make it a little bit bigger. And then, oh, see how hard that edge is? So I'm going to want to go back in here and soften that edge so that it's more of a gradual transition. Ooh, it's making it more gray. If I want to get rid of that all the way, notice I click, click, click until it disappears. And you can see what that's doing to the mask down here at the bottom. So it's hiding parts of that fog. But I kind of like the fog, so I might leave most of it and come back in to add like a moon or something. Oh, there's, I'm starting to see the trees over here as I get rid of that fog in the distance. And the fog might be more of a dark gray anyway. Okay, so you can really customize using the brush tool along with masking. Okay, what's next? Let's add a character. So I'm going to go up to File, making sure I'm on the top layer because I want to sort of layer my things in a way that makes sense. So I'm going to go up to File, Place Embedded. This is how you place one photograph into another. And let's see, I'm going to choose the mummy. Now I found this mummy online by going to a Halloween costume website. So you can just type in mummy Halloween costume. And then you tend to get pretty simple backgrounds. So that makes it a lot easier when you're trying to make selections. So watch this cool trick. You can either use the quick selection tool in order to paint your selection, but then you have to like get the legs and get the feet and change the brush size maybe and oh, don't forget your, his head. So you can do all that to get a really good selection, Command D to deselect, or since this is a very simple delineation between the subject and the background, huh, meaning this is a very simple contrast, you can go up here to where it says select subject and then Photoshop will do all that for you. So it's thinking, it's thinking, and then it says here's the subject separate from the background. So that's pretty easy. You can hide it with the mask. If you want to resize it, Command T to make it smaller. And then you can put him wherever you want it within your composition. Um, now if you want him or her behind the, the fog, you may have to drag them down a layer. So now the fog is affecting them as well. So that's one way to make a selection. Let's get another um, image in here. Let's get the bats. So I'm going to go File, Place Embedded. And let's see, I think I want these bats. Place. And you can do kind of something cool with these. Let's test it out. So hit Enter. And notice they're dark. The background's light. So I'm going to try different blending modes and just see what happens. Oh, the very first one. Look what it did. It got rid of the light background and it's only keeping the area where the dark areas overlap. So if I click darken, suddenly, and I can put these above the fog if I want, suddenly we just have the bats. You don't see the background at all. So that's a really easy way to add dark objects that have a light background without having to actually select them. You're just like using a blending mode to hide that background or get rid of that that effect because it's again it's only showing the areas where the dark overlaps so there's my bats let's add a moon so i can show you start to show you some of these special effects that you can choose so if i go up to file place embedded i'm on the top layer i can always change it from there so i'm going to choose the moon now this might be easy enough to select with the you know one of the selection tools and using the select subject, but it kind of has like this um, this edge, you know, where it's kind of fading to black. So it might be easier just to use the circle tool or the ellipse tool. Um, if you hold shift, you can keep it constrained to a perfect circle and get it close. And then you can go up to select and um, you can go down to transform selection. So this will allow you to pinpoint that circle exactly where you want it and they can use the arrow keys to place it more uh, directly and then I see oh maybe this part's a little bit big over here there we go pretty good and then if I like that selection say I want to save that selection and come back to it later I can go to select uh, save selection and then once you name it you can go back to you know later 
load selection, and you can get that selection back um, if you if you wanted to. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste. That's another way to do this. You don't have to add a mask. You could go up to edit copy and then edit paste and watch what happens in my layers panel. Down at the corner, layer three becomes the moon. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete this layer because I don't need the background anymore. Okay, obviously this moon's too big. Command T, make it smaller. Hold shift to constrain the proportions. Maybe it could be a really big moon like on the horizon or something cool like that. Maybe it could be a yellow moon. Yeah, let's make it like a harvest moon or something. Or a blood moon. We can make it red. So if I want to just affect the color um, below it, it kind of has to have a color already. But let's see what we could try. Let's try an adjustment layer of one of those photo filters with a deep red filter and then increase the density. So notice what it's doing. It's changing the, all of the layers beneath it, right? So to clip it just to the layer right below um, in the layers panel, watch what happens to this layer when I click this clip to button. So the little arrow is indicating it's only affecting this one layer, the moon. So I could increase that intensity a little bit. I could add like a blending mode on this. I like the darker ones. Um, let's see. This one looks pretty convincing. And then maybe we can darken it a little bit. So brightness, contrast. Again, clip it right to the layer below it. So you can see what each of those is doing to our moon layer. So that can be pretty handy. And then uh, we might want to even lower the opacity a little bit on the moon itself so that some of that fog kind of comes through. There we go. So now we're kind of playing with the push and pull of which layer is showing through. And if we want to give an outer glow to the moon, that is one of these special effects. So I encourage you on this tutorial to challenge yourself to try some of these special effects. So one of them, if you click, it says FX down here next to the, the uh, layer mask button. So if you click on the FX, one of the options is to add an outer glow. So this would be really good for a moon that's like shining. Um, so we're going to play with the spread and the size. And since it's a red moon, we kind of have to play with the color of it too. So it wouldn't make sense for a red moon to be glowing with a white outer glow. So we're going to change this color to that red color. There we go. That looks a little bit more convincing. And then you can lower the opacity. Increase the spread a little bit. Try and make it match somewhat. Maybe lower the spread and increase the size. It kind of takes some playing around. There we go. Kind of looks like it's affecting the, the clouds around it. Click OK. And even if you want to try playing around with making an extra copy, um, that one though then turned off all these adjustment layers. You'd have to do that again. Command Z. I think it's good the way it is. All right. You can also use like dodge and burn tools to adjust like the opacity on the house. Maybe you want the house to look kind of burnt in certain places like it's been through a fire or it's just been through something. So right here this little indicator is showing that it's a smart object. So we're going to have to turn that off. Click right on the layer itself and go down to rasterize. So now the house has editable pixels. So I'm going to go up to this little eye or not eyedropper. This little dodge tool. It looks like a lollipop or something that shows that um, that's the dodge tool. You can um, lighten or brighten certain areas by painting with it. So these also work with the brush tools at the top on the options bar. Um, this burn tool is what I'm looking for. So this will allow me to darken it and kind of see what it does. Ooh, just kind of darkens it. Uh, you can also <clears throat> you can also darken certain areas. So say I want this window to look like it's been through something. <clears throat> so say I want this window to look like it's been burnt or something, or maybe the shingles on the house. You can kind of see what those are doing. That tool, if I just click with it, click, 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 and you can increase the exposure to increase the strength. So now whenever I click, it makes a bigger difference. So that's something you can try to really alter that house and make it look less like a nice bright daylight house. Now it looks a little bit more like a creepy haunted house. 
Okay, let's add a ghost and try, um, oh, let's add a tombstone. So I'm going to go file. Well, let's go up in the layers so I don't mess anything up. Okay, at the very top, I'm going to go file, place embedded, and I'm going to choose a tombstone to write on. So here's just a blank, a blank tombstone with nothing on it. And then hit enter to place it. Let's select it. It's pretty easy. I think Photoshop found that okay. Um, we'll just add a mask to hide the parts that are outside that selection. And then voila, here is my tombstone. It doesn't look very convincing. We might have to put it under the um, fog. There it is. Okay, so now that looks a little bit more convincing. Um, something you can add with the FX is a drop shadow. So for this object, it might need a drop shadow. Um, and realistically, you would actually be going back in space. But just to show you what the drop shadow does, you can kind of adjust the, the distance, the spread, um, the opacity. It might look more convincing if I put it right up against that hill. So it looks like the shadow, yeah, is like cast on that hill. <coughs> okay, now we got to add some words to it. So I would suggest zooming in to your little tombstone. You can also add a shadow with that burn tool we just learned. So you could like paint a shadow onto the grass like so. Go back to my background copy. Here's my burn tool. Just kind of burn the grass underneath of it. There we go. Creepy. And then let's add a name. What's a good one? Hmm. I have to look this up. <laughs> Intermission. Okay. Oh, I like that one. Okay. Okay, I went and I looked one up. Okay, I found one I like. So we're going to add the name. Um, if you go to the text tool in your toolbar, we can give a name to this tombstone. So click once with the text tool, just like, uh, well, click once with the text tool. You do not want to drag out a text box because that will really limit what you can do. Um, with your text. So I would suggest just clicking once, placing a point, and then start typing. So Photoshop is not like a great um, text generator, um, editor, you know, like for writing papers, you wouldn't want to use Photoshop. Photoshop is just for like one single word, one single phrase, one single sentence, text layout, as opposed to like writing a paper. So you don't want to write a paragraph in Photoshop. Um, you would want to write it in like InDesign or um, some other program and then bring it into Photoshop. So this is really good just for like titles and subtitles and that kind of thing. Um, so we're just going to title this tombstone, Dr. Izzy Gone. Dr. Izzy gone. So now we're going to have to change some things. You'll notice there's, you can just double click to like re-highlight the text that you just made. Um, there's all of these, oops, there's all of these choices up at the top. Like, sorry, everything's frozen. Wake up. There we go. Okay, so there's all these things up at the top that you can change. There's all these things up at the top. There's all these things that you can change up at the top on the options bar, like such as the uh, font. Let's do something simple. Um, you can change the size. We need it to be a little smaller so that it fits on the tombstone. Maybe we'll even like in, like insert a, a break here and have the doctor be at the top. 
it's going very slow. Obviously that color is not right, so we got to change this color up here. So sometimes I'm going to wait for it to render because something is taking forever. Maybe if I close my other ones. Close, close, close. Okay, so then if you double click on this text box and the layer here, uh, we can change all of these fonts, sizes, colors, that kind of thing. I think I want it to be like a brownish color. Yeah, be like that. And then if you want to indent, place your point, hit enter. And then if you want to resize it, you can use this um, command T again. Maybe stretch it, shrink it, make it fit that space. Something like that. Dr. Izzy gone. And then we could put like, oh, hold option to make a copy of that layer. And then let go. Double click over here to change that text. Um, let's say 1730 to 19... 56. So this is like really long. <laughs> Living vampire or something. Okay, uh, the tombstone might even look more real if we added another layer style. So this effects down here, known as bevel and emboss. Where's my tombstone? Okay, I'm going to turn on auto select to try and find this. Oh, it found the fog. That's great. Here it is. You can tell what's on each layer by making it invisible with the eyeball tool and seeing what disappears. Yeah, so that is the layer that the tombstone's on. So selecting the tombstone, notice it's a smart object. So again, I need to rasterize it by clicking right on the layer and go to rasterize layer. And some images are just saved this way online. So when you download them, they're going to save as smart objects which means their pixels are protected, but the downside of that is you can't change the pixels. You can't like paint on them or, um, you know, change the formatting at all. So rasterizing can be really helpful because then you're making it out of pixels again, as opposed to being a vector graphic, which is protected. Okay, so I'm going to add an effect, a layer style of bevel and emboss. Some other cool ones that you can try would be like adding a gradient overlay. Maybe I'll add that to the mummy or something so you can see that. Um, like we already looked at adding a drop shadow, um, color overlay, some of those can be really helpful. So I'm going to choose bevel and emboss, and then you can kind of see what it does right there, but there's lots of different options, lots of different styles of embossing. That one looks maybe a little bit more realistic. You can change the depth, so you can see what that's doing, the size, whoa, big change. Softening that edge to make it look more 3D. So that is what the bevel and emboss tools do. Maybe I need a little bit more depth there. <coughs> there, that one looks a little bit better. Okay. So click OK whenever you have those uh, the way you want it. If I'm going to add a layer style to the mummy, I might want to click on the layer that says mummy. And then if you go down to FX and choose gradient overlay, Notice whatever gradient you have selected will only affect, notice whatever gradient you have selected will only affect this one layer. So if I change it to a blue, let's see, maybe this purple can increase the opacity a little bit. You can see what that's doing because it's mixing with the green. So maybe if we make it a red, it might be more obvious what it's doing. There you go. So now you can really see the gradient and then you can alter like the opacity of the gradient and the angle of the gradient. That looks good. So his legs kind of look like it's in shadow. Okay, there we go. So that's our, our mummy. And you can again turn off those effects with the eyeball tool if you just want to like see what they look like as a preview. Kind of helps balance with the red moon over here. Okay, um, I think that's about it. Remember, you're adding five characters, spooky characters, 
you are adding at least three special effects, whether that be blending modes, um, special effects from the layer effects menu down here, uh, masking, creating um, different blending modes or different opacities, um, your filter gallery if you want to make the whole thing look like it's made on with a painting. So for example, if we go to this background copy to make the grass look a little bit more painterly, you could go up to filter and then you could go down to where it says filter gallery. And as long as this isn't a smart object, you can change the pixels and make them look like they were painted. This might be good for grass. Ooh, that one's really nice and creepy. So there's all kinds of different like choices that you have in order to make your um, picture look more like a painting. Ooh, adding a lot of heavy film grain might be good, increasing the intensity, the contrast. Ooh, I like that one. Okay, so then once you click OK, it will be a permanent change to that layer, so I cannot get that back if I go like a bunch. I'd, I'd have to go back in the history panel over here or I'd have to do command Z a bunch of times. So that's a permanent change. It's called a destructive change to that layer because um, it changed it for good. All right, have fun and have a great happy Halloween.